Hey friends, rainy day in Boracay, so I thought I would do my next video. Today I want to talk about delta neutral trading. In the last video, I did a quick introduction to delta, your first option Greek. Delta, as a recap, it's a measure of how sensitive the PL of your position is to a move up or down in the underlying. And in the case of the strategy we've already covered uh, using put credit spreads, a put credit spread is always a positive delta position. So it will benefit partly from options premium decay, which is the edge that I try to capture, but it also is affected by a move up or down in the market. So it's kind of like a bet on the market going up. Today, I'm gonna to talk about delta neutral trades. And so a delta neutral option position tries to benefit from that same option premium decay that we're trying to capture, but it does it without having a bias on the market direction. But first, as always, I am not a financial advisor. To begin, let's talk about call options. We've been looking at put options, these over here so far. These easily fit my analogy of insurance. A put makes money if the market goes down past that strike level. As the seller, we don't want that to happen. Call options are the reverse. Call option makes money if the market goes above that strike level. Selling a call would be like selling insurance on the upside. So going forward, I'm going to start dropping the insurance analogy and I'm going to talk more in real option terms. Just as we can sell a put or a put credit spread, we can also sell calls or a call credit spread uh, on the upside. Uh, put credit spread is always positive delta, and in the same way, a call credit spread will always be negative delta. Notice how delta gets smaller as you move, as the risk is further away on the puts from our perspective as the sellers. Many option traders like to use delta for doing their strike selection. So let's do that now. We're going to sell a put credit spread 60 days out. We're going to go to the 16 delta. And I'm going to use a fixed width. We'll stick to our $10 wide as we've been doing. So there's our put credit spread. We can do the same thing with a call. In the case of the calls, the risk is further away the further up we go. And so we can go out here to the 472, and that's our 16 delta. 10 higher than that is 482. And so there's a call credit spread. So you can see it's pretty much the opposite of put credit spread. Now, I don't normally trade call credit spreads on their own. What I like to do is combine them with the put credit spread so the deltas cancel each other out. And we're left with just the option premium decay uh, from both of them contributing to our position uh, without being very sensitive to large moves in the underlying. Here's what that looks like. This setup is called an iron condor. It's basically a bet the market will remain in between these two short strikes by expiration. Like the put credit spread we've been talking about, I do like to take these off early. Now, with the put credit spread, recall that our margin, uh, our maximum loss, was the width of the spread minus the credit we received. With an iron condor, we can't lose on both sides at the same time. So our maximum loss is the width minus both of the credits, fine-tuning the delta. If you look carefully, you'll see that we actually do have a little bit of negative delta on this trade. Uh, there's some unevenness in the structure on the call and the put side that caused this to happen. Even though our shorts have the same delta, uh, the longs won't necessarily have the same delta. So to fix this, we can move. I prefer to move the call side out a little bit uh, to fix the delta, um, or just leave it as is and carry a little bit of negative delta. That's also fine. Let's take a look at moving these uh, strikes out, and I'm going to keep the width at 10, right? Okay, so at 478 uh, on the short for the call, we're pretty much flat delta on the position. That would probably be a good starting setup. Now, iron condors, normally you just enter them all as one order. I was showing the two spreads to give you a, an understanding of the, the pieces that go into it. But when you actually put the order in, right, we're, we're at the, what, 424 and the 478. What you would really do is you come in and you would sell the 424 and we're going to buy $10 wing, sell the 478 and we're going to buy $10 wing, and it's one trade, right? Looks the same, delta basically flat, it's the same trade. And the whole thing's going on for $1.31. Just like with the put credit spread, I encourage you to play around with parameters and settings and uh, find an approach that works for you. Some underlyings that work well for this, in addition to SPY, you have IWM, which is the Russell Index, uh, DIA is the Dow Index, QQQ is the NASDAQ, tech stocks tends to have a little bit of juice to it, 
Also, there's GLD, which is gold, and TLT, which are bonds. So it's nice to get out of equities and get some diversification that way. So you could be running iron condors on all of these different markets uh, at the same time. You can also trade iron condors on stocks, but it tends, uh, tends to work better if you go a little higher priced. So I'm thinking about companies like Apple, uh, maybe Microsoft, that sort of thing. Uh, $100 or higher is going to be a lot easier. You can go lower than that, but it gets a bit more difficult. And I would use at least uh, $3 wide wings or 1% per month uh, as your minimums and collect at least a dollar in this case, right? With put credit spreads, I recommended a, a 50 cent minimum, which works out to $50 per contract. Uh, that's because you had two legs. With the Iron Condor, you basically have two credit spreads going on at the same time. So I recommend collecting at least a dollar. I usually take these off at about 50% of that initial credit as a target, or you can push it further if you want. If you want to use a stop loss, I'll often use uh, double the initial credit, just like I suggested for the put credit spread. Uh, three times can also work. Although if your max loss is close to the max loss of the position, then you don't necessarily need stop loss. I also tend to exit when you get down around 21 days to expiration in the trade and just take it off. Uh, or maybe you want to push it to 14, uh, whatever works for you. Now, when I put these on, I look at this max loss, and I like this max loss to be no more than 5% of the value of the total account. Also, for the types of trades we're talking about now, where you're throwing the trade on and just letting it go uh, until it hits target, uh, I don't like to use more than half the account on these. So if you have a bunch of these on and you're option buying power is getting down to about half the overall account, that's enough risk. You really don't want to be putting all of your account into options trades. Just let half of it sit in cash, that's fine. Now, if you start trading iron condors or any other strategy, uh, I recommend creating a spreadsheet like this one and just keep track of all of your trades you know, as you make them. And it'll give you an idea of you know how things are going. So you know here you can see a lot of the ones that I've been recommending, like QQQ, IWM, DIA, uh, I've traded these a lot. Uh, and this is how many contracts I put on. This is the width I used for the spread, uh, how many days to expiration it was, what was the credit. And then when I exited, I kept track of that as well, You know how many days I had left. Uh, you can see I pushed my luck in the early days on, um, on the exit, but that's fine. Uh, price, p &L. This is my p &L as a percentage of the max loss. And this is my return as a percentage of the credit I collected when I originally put the trade on. Those are two different things that I like to measure, right? And so over here, I can see that my average return on margin uh, is 3.5% over hundreds of these. And I typically was in them around one month. So that's a very good return. Um, now, if I'm only using half my account and the other half is in cash, that's not my return on the, the account overall, right? So then it's maybe a little under 2% a month on these. Create your own version of this, add whatever extra parameters you wanna keep track of. I don't have backtest to share on Iron Condors, but there's a fantastic blog by another professional trader, this guy, Dave. He's done some pretty exhaustive backtesting of Iron Condors on the S&P and the Russell. Uh, he's using the indexes, but this would be SPY and IWM from the ETF side of things. And uh, you can go and take a look at his results. So you can see the kind of equity curves he gets. So you can dig through, he's got years of these kinds of back tests and uh, you can just sort of dig through and see how that kind of stuff looks if that excites you. So I just wanted to add also, this is an example of an iron condor that I'm doing right now. This is an oil. Uh, these are futures options. That's a bit advanced. I, I wouldn't recommend that uh, as a new trader, but the, the basic structure uh, and the way I handle everything is all pretty much the same kind of thing that we've been talking about today. So. Uh, so yeah, it's a, uh, it's a great trade. That's it for today. I, I hope this was interesting. If you have questions about iron condors, um, post them up in the comments below. Uh, if this was interesting, please do leave a like on the video, consider subscribing. I'm going to be doing some more Delta neutral strategies in the future and eventually moving towards, um, actively managed options trades. But, uh, yeah, uh, until then, see you next time.